All right, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing another beer from the other half brewing company, and they're headquartered in Brooklyn, New York, and this is their Triple Citra Chroma. So they're calling this one an Imperial IPA that comes in at 10% alcohol by volume. No IBUs list in time of review. This can is approximately six weeks old. I wanna give a huge thanks and shout out once again to a couple good friends of mine and fellow beer tubers, Dan and Mike over at FLX Beer Reviews for hooking me up with this one. So big thanks to them for this beer. In the description box, I'll post a link to their channel along with a link to the beer haul video I did that contains all the goodies they hooked me up with. And they hooked me up with two different uh, beers from Other Half, both within their Chroma series, their Double Dry Hop, Double Motuac Chroma, which I already reviewed. And then this this one, and I believe this one was specifically given to me by Mike and the other by Dan, but huge thanks to both of them. Uh, love their channel. Go check them out. They deserve way more subs, and I just love watching their reviews because it's two people, two good friends, I should say, hanging out, just enjoying a beer, and not even reviewing as much as just talking about it. And uh, they hooked me up with a lot of good beers, especially from other half because they're like shelfies, the Dan. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this one. So Citra, it's one of those uh, hops that everyone seems to enjoy, and this is a big uh, triple version of their Chroma series. They say Imperial IPA, it's basically triple IPA, but whatever. Blue tab means that it's brewed in East Bloomfield, New York. I believe all the Chromas are brewed in East Bloomfield, and uh, yeah, anyway, let's give it a proper pour here. Ooh, so that's way lighter than I anticipated at 10%. Holy shit. Wow, okay. That might be one of the lightest looking 10% beers I have seen. So in person, this has this really nice yellow-orange color, more to the yellow side, milky. It has that milky yellow color. On camera, it might be a little bit more dull, but like in person, it's like, it's almost like sunshine in a glass down here. Very uh, turbid and murky. Had about a half finger of a uh, bright white head. Yeah, it can generate back about a half finger. Has some legs on there. Definitely know it's bigger ABV. That looks beautiful. But again, much lighter than I anticipate. A lot of times these, you know, Bigger ABV beer is a little bit darker. <laughs> That's really nice. So six weeks old, and uh, I do apologize to uh, both Dan and Mike, and Dan, or Mike for giving me this one and not drinking it right away. When he gave it, me this beer, I think it was like two, two and a half weeks old. I sat on it because I had so many other beers from them. In addition to uh, another good friend of mine and viewer of the channel, Steven, had other beer mails, hot butcher stuff. So... Uh, knowing, for me, knowing triple um, IPAs from other half and how they hold up, I kind of put this one to the back of the fridge because I figured when I drink it, even if it is five, six, seven weeks old, I still think it's going to be damn good. Where some other brews, I don't know that. So this is a bit older at around six weeks old when I'm reviewing it, but it doesn't smell it <laughs> at all in the nose. It smells super, super fresh. There's peach, there's pineapple. <laughs> it smells awesome. Peach, pineapple, there's citrus tones, there's orange. Maybe a little bit of like a honeydew melon. Like if I was doing this blind, I think this is like Citroen Galaxy. Because I'm getting like that crushed kind of pineapple. Stinky, over-ripened pineapple that I get with Galaxy a lot. The malt has this really nice bready... I was going to say biscuity, but more like a bready crackery, but a little bit of a biscuity kind of uh, malt tone to it. <laughs> I, to quote a hop butcher um, tasting note on the back of the cans, this has like a dank greens component. Yeah, it's dank, has like a green kind of like almost, I've said this before, like a tomato stock type of thing going on. Yeah, it smells really good. It smells like they have done Citra proper. And this entire series usually does a great job when it comes to specific hops. Um, this is one of the better series, I think, out there. And the nose smells awesome. So let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again, Dan and Mike. A couple things I'll say right after the rip. Actually, time out. I do that a lot. And I've been recently trying to kind of cut that where I take a couple sips, then I start saying stuff. So let me go in for another sip. All right, now I'll say it. Two things I noticed right off the bat. The nose screamed fresh, ripened, definitely sweet. Peach, pineapple, a little bit of honeydew melon, ton, ton of, uh, touch of citrus. In the taste, it's more candied versions. That it has a sweeter 
candied vibe to it. And I can taste the alcohol, which is a rarity when it comes to the other half. Body on this one is also thin for 10%. So let's go body and mouthfeel. Typical review like I do. One more sip and then we'll go body. Body's like medium touch over, thin at 10%. Um, I, I said it a lot in other reviews where I'm like, I'm fine with the body being thin. I'd, I'd like to see this one like higher side of medium, lower side of full. That's where I'm okay with the 10% beer, hot forward beer. Um, I don't need to be thick and syrupy and whatnot, but this is a bit thin for 10%. The mouth feels nice. The mouth feel, it's soft and it's smooth, not necessarily creamy, a little bit more carbonation, but... You know, it's another half mouthfeel, so it's still going to be at the very least pretty good, and it is. So mouthfeel, I'm happy with. Body definitely thin. The taste, it's it's nice, but I wish it was a little less sweet. Uh, so right at the forefront, there is there's peach, there's pineapple, there's orange, there's honeydew melon. It's all candy though, real sweet. Passes through halfway through the palate is where that dang green thing kind of steps in and says, hey, it's not all sweet. Yeah, it's like a tomato stalk meets like a earthy grassiness. Carries on the back of the palate. This actually finishes moderately bitter, like mild to moderately, but more approaching moderately bitter. There's a slight dry finish to this one, but it's more bitterness. And I think that bitterness is mixing in with like a kind of like an alcohol dryness. And that's where, and then right after that, I started getting like the alcohol booziness on the palate. It's not as bad as the first sip would indicate, but it's definitely noticeable. Like there's a booziness on the palate, which is rare. Again, that's very rare for another half beer. Feel it in the chest and in the stomach. I definitely feel uh, the boozy aspect of this beer, which again, we're all spoiled. If you're drinking, you know, huge Imperial IPAs and triple IPAs, and they're, you know, nine and a half, 10, 10 and a half, 11 percent and you're not tasting alcohol, that's great. Like, that's fantastic. They can hide the alcohol. A lot of times when I drink one and I get the booziness, I'm surprised, but I shouldn't be. Like, right here, I'm surprised because other half usually does a great job hiding the booziness, but I'm a little bit surprised. The, the, the funny thing is, is, after the last two or three sips, that dang green kind of thing is starting to build on the back of palate. Bitterness is starting to build. And again, with that booziness, it's kind of kind of um, saturating the palate. Here's the thing. You, you got to be honest, and I always am. Maybe it's my fault for sitting on this for, you know, almost a month, but it's been in my fridge the entire time. It went from Mike's fridge, basically, to my cooler, to my fridge. It's been handled properly and stuff. And I, every time I, I feel like I maybe, I'm not going to give a beer a high score. Or I'm going to say, hey, to be, you got to be honest. And you know that I'm going to give it a lower score than, than maybe you would have thought. I, I like to try to let you know that this isn't a beer that was handled improperly. This did not change temperatures 10 times. This was not, you know, hanging out in the, the, the warm weather just randomly. This was kept in my fridge basically for the last month at a proper temperature. Didn't change, didn't fluctuate. Um, and again, maybe it's my fault for not drinking this super fresh, but again, it, it just can't happen. I can't drink all these beers super fresh. So I do apologize to Mike not getting this quicker, but six weeks, we shouldn't have a big issue. Here's the thing. I just think at the end of the day, couple negatives for me personally. I can taste the booze. It's slightly astringent on the back of the palate. The, although that fruity quality, I really liked on the nose and then it translated into more of like a candied, like oversaturated, like kind of sweetness on the palate. And I think this is a little bit more bitter than I anticipated. And I think the problem is, is I'm fine with the moderate bitterness mixing in with that. You know, it, it balances out that sweet kind of candy character. But I think that alcohol astringent comes in and does something kind of different to me. Here's the thing. I don't dislike this. I actually, I dig it from a certain aspect is that it's 10%. I'm going to drink the rest of the can. Not going to dislike it. Not going to, it's not going to be tough to put down. This is not undrinkable. It's nothing like that. But the quality I expect from other half and, and when I'm going into this beer and I love this, this is probably my least favorite Chroma beer. I can tell you that right now. I think the booziness, the kind of the, the, the too, too sweet on the palate. Uh, that's the thing. I think this is balanced, but I don't think it's balanced. Does that make any sense? Am I just rambling? Like that candied aspect at the front, I think is almost too sweet where it's a little bit too bitter on the back end and I just don't think they clash as well. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. All I know is the nose is better. The taste isn't bad. But 
for something like this, like I went into this, and again, I always say don't go into these reviews, preconceived notions. A lot of times I just do because I know what other half's capable of. And when I see triple citricoma, I'm thinking at the very least, this is going to be like a four, probably a four, two, five, maybe in the four, five, maybe even higher. Who knows? You never know, right? This is not going to, this is not going to reach a four for me. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think the thin body too, like the mouth feels fine, but the body, I don't know. This review is already too long as is. I'm just going to have to go with the score. So, uh, other halves, triple citrochroma, part of the chroma series. I'm going to have to give this a low 3.75 out of 5. I'm going to go 3.7. 3.7 out of 5. That's probably, again, my least favorite chroma. Uh, actually, take it back. What is the hop that I hate? Enigma. I think I had a beer in the chroma series. The, it was like maybe double Enigma, Enigma chroma or regular just Enigma chroma. Don't like Enigma hops. Just don't. Um, but this is like... As far as like cans and stuff I've had, definitely one of the least favorite within the series. So um, price and availability, I think these are like $22, $20 to $22 a four pack. I would never pay that again of what I'm drinking. Who knows? Maybe if I would have drank it at two and a half, three weeks old, that would have been something different, but just not digging it as much as I thought. And uh, availability, I don't know with these Chroma series how far out they get, uh, but you definitely can pick them up in Western New York. Um, outside of that, if you saw this beer and you live outside of the Western New York area, let me know if you picked it up. Let me know if you have this one and what you think about it because this is one of the few other half hop forward beers that I've been disappointed with lately. Yeah, it just doesn't do it for me. I will say that um, as I continue to drink on it, it's getting a little, you know, my palate's getting acclimated, so it's all, all right, but still not one of my favorites. So huge thanks to Mike for this beer. I'd love to try it, even though... You're not always going to love everything you try. I do appreciate uh, Dan and Mike hooking me up with all the different beers. Like I said, go check out their channel, Good Dudes, and uh, not much more to say about it. So if you've had this one before, post in the comment section. Appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Until the next one, cheers.